Good afternoon. My name is Brian Crawford. This is my capstone project presentation for Kennesaw State's Instructional Technology Master's Program. The title of my presentation is OneNote, the Central Resource Hub for Instruction. The purpose for the capstone project was to increase teacher efficiency. I know for myself when I thought about this project and I had to brainstorm on what was the approach that I was going to take and how was I going to utilize technology to accomplish this goal. Um, the idea was not surrounded around the students, it was more surrounded around uh, the teacher and himself and creating a positive learning environment, a positively thinking teacher uh, is going to create a more learning, a more positive learning environment. And for myself, that helps out tremendously whenever I feel like I'm being productive and efficient in my job. And that job entails around planning, instructing, and assessing. To meet the modern day demands for teachers, I was gravitated towards creating a toolbox concept one that I felt like would take all the resources and all of the platforms and put them into one stage and one platform and have one box to utilize everything we needed in order to instruct and engage our students so that they could learn on a more efficient rate and at the same time would add more uh, fluidity to my lessons and instruction. Because I know whenever I leave my classroom, I feel a lot more productive whenever I feel like I've had flow. And in my lesson. So let's take a step back and let's look at how the OneNote platform allows us to plan better, to instruct more engagingly, and to assess our students on a more effective route. Um, as far as planning is concerned and meeting the modern day demands, you know, for planning, we got to make sure that we're creating higher order thinking and we got to make sure that we are being. Uh, creating a highly engaging atmosphere whenever we're working through each lesson from day to day. And, and a lot of that takes place from research. And a lot of it goes from gut and how we function as a teacher because teaching is a personality. And that's the great thing about uh, some of the best teachers is the fact that they have very flexible personalities, but at the same time, on the same note, they absorb a variety of personalities as well and being able to connect with different types of students. So it's important for us to not only you know, have our natural tendencies uh, to lead, natural tendencies to instruct and to you know, present a certain curriculum or content, but at the same time we got to make sure we're constantly researching and constantly staying up to speed as far as today's classroom. And you'll hear a lot of folks talking about the 21st century classroom, which is a big focus on, you know, why we're sitting here today with the, uh, the OneNote platform and creating an instruction that gets away from the old school notebook and have everything that we need that makes us a successful teacher. And simply taking that same organization, that same uh, attention to detail, and just transforming it into an online product. So going back to the focus on OneNote, this is our standard, this is standard one, and this is probably my most favorite tool of OneNote. And this was something that I had in my mind when I was like, right, I want to create this toolbox that has all these concepts, it has everything in it, and I just go to one location, one hub, and I've got everything that I need to plan, to instruct, and to assess. Just like the old school notebooks. This has that, but this right here is my favorite, and it's silly, but I'm done. We go through it, how do we do it? We assess our kids, do an informative assessment on a daily basis, we see what, how, what's the retain, uh, how are they retaining the information, at what percent, you know, how proficient is the instruction to the kids understanding or the students understanding of the material, all right, and we can go through this and we see that, and this saves. And once this saves, other teachers of environmental science can view this, or other lit or math teachers or whatever, whomever's in uh, collaborative scenarios, they can all work together and they can visualize and they can see. And they don't have to be in the same room as they have to be face to face. 
It's collaborative. You can share it. You can utilize it. This same notebook can be shared throughout the entire science department or the English department or math. Or you get the idea. But having this idea, making it visual, you can see who's on pace. Administrators can come in. They can see, all right, this is their standards. This is how they're making it visual. And then they're going from A to B. And they can see how far we've gone and how far we have to go. You can share it with students, with parents. Everybody can see this. This is that blending, blended learning. All right, and it's the same thing with collaborating teachers. They don't have to share notebooks and make copies and all that. They just share this electronic platform and everybody has access to it from teachers to students to parents to administrators and everybody's on the same page. And you don't have four or five different little check boxes to check off. You've got one product that's highly usable in the classroom and before instruction begins. So once we identify the standards that we're going to instruct and the, the students are going to learn, then we venture on and we talk about the learning targets. And this is a big focus with uh, visible learning instruction and making sure that the students are able to see exactly what's the process. You tell them trust the process, they got to understand what the process is and where are we going. Okay. Now I'll get into presenting the content as well because as you see for standard one, we have our standard, we have our learning targets that we can check off and we can show progress. We have our success criteria, all right? And then we get into engaging strategies and we can identify, and this is pretty broad, and teachers can see what's available. And we can expand on this. But hey, I use this activity all the time and it works. We can put it in here. And all you gotta do is just create a little tag. It's basically a bullet that allows you to mark it off. And you can see, you know, are you using the same instructional strategies all the time? And if you are, and if it's functional, that's great. But if you're, you're not seeing the progress that you want, go back and see how are you engaging the students and we can break it up. And we can add a little flair. You can add a little flavor to your teaching performance on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can uh, kind of switch it up a little bit for your kids. Keeps them excited and it keeps their mind ticking because there's a little surprise element there. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of reward and being surprised and in a good way, uh, keeping the learning environment positive. All right, moving on. All right, I'll get into the curriculum content and I'll focus on this in a minute. And that'll be uh, part of instruction, make sure it's visible, flipping back in two between how we're doing this and showing the standards and learning targets all in one as we present. Planning resources. Here's Bloom's Taxonomy. Bloom's Taxonomy is very effective. We've been using it for years, but making sure we're creating higher order thinking activities that expand the thought process. And it's, it sounds silly, but whenever I'm talking to a lot of my students and my lower learning students, they may give a wrong answer to a question. And I praise that because at least they're thinking. And that the idea of just actually hearing a question and then thinking about what the possible answer could be from what the information that they do know, that's huge. And for a lot of our, some of, a lot of my students, you know, it's really tough to try to get these students to think and just to give me something. And for this, um, you know, creating verbiage and ways to really get the kids to really understand. It's more for us than it is for the students because it just simply gives us direction on how we're going to present the material, not only note-based and the information they need to have in their notebook to study, but also the activities that they'll perform in class that reinforce the concepts and the standards as we move throughout the standard. Let's go on to visible learning connection. Uh, visible learning is a, is a as a big focus as far as how the instruction is organized and how it is constructed nowadays. And rightfully so, because there's been a lot of research done, you know, mainly by John Hattie. Uh, John Hattie is a, is a big part of this resource material came from here. He focuses on effect size and looking back at his research and seeing what are the most effective and most influential 
um, activities and strategies to create achievement. And we can see this. This is something that the teacher can use. They'll look at it, you know, you know, one or two times a semester to kind of get things rolling. But if they get into, uh, I feel stagnant, or they don't feel like they don't have a lot of growth in their classroom, this is something that they can look back on. And we can build on this, and we can add more resources to promote visible learning instruction. Here's another planning checklist to kind of stay conscious and to work on our, our habits, our routines, on how we think, we ask the kids to think, but how do teachers think about the instructional process? Is it higher order of thinking? Are we digging deep into their knowledge? Are, are we creating the understanding that allows the students to elaborate outside the box and then take a lot of the memorization of what they are learning and putting it into uh, understanding how it relates to real world authentic scenarios. And we can go into engaging strategies as well. I reuse this. This is uh, a part of us as a tab in itself but I also included it in each standard focus so that we can see evidence of how we're presenting each standard. For me, right along with planning comes our pirate preps and talking about narratives and reflections and writing and science. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's very important for students to be able to continuously be able to express the information that they research, that they they read on a daily basis. And this pirate prep activity for us for the Brunswick High Pirates. So we do an introduction to every lesson and it's an article. Um, it could be uh, a variety of things. I had a request for this article here and it's GMO genetically modified organisms. And <clears throat> so the students will go through and we'll pick out important pieces of the article and with Mimeo, you can highlight uh, important pieces that they can record into their power prep. And they'll just bullet five facts. It could be a question they'll generate from the article as well. So we'll get through with this power prep. It takes about five minutes for them to get it down. Um, we may elaborate on some of the concepts. And some of the topics are pretty interesting because they're all current. And um, we're just trying to stay in the now with the news today and getting outside of Brunswick, Georgia and realizing that there is a world outside of what's going on. A lot of it's positive, some of it's negative, but at the same time, it's very dynamic. So being able to go from your pirate preps, <coughs> here's the article, we get done, everybody starts to get their notes out and what have you, we can apply Go to standards, students can get out their learning targets and they'll see, alright, this is what we've accomplished, alright, we are into week two. And they have this as a hard copy in their notebook. And they keep up with it as well, just like we keep up with it up here. It keeps it constant, keeps the, uh, the idea of what you need to know is never a surprise. It's always there because it's in their notebook and we're constantly utilizing it here. So let's say we're going to go into... Um, the beginning. Students will compare and analyze levels of biological organization. We're talking about organisms, species, populations, communities, ecosystems, and biospheres. And we'll get into the curriculum content presentation of the material. They can have note-taking strategies. They've got their, uh, their learning target products. And this will be ownership-based. It'll be some of their activities, a lot of their activities will be assigned. Right, but at the same time, on the same token, they get to choose which product that they have created to best resemble or to best express what they are learning and how they learned it. So we get into biological organization. Here it is, my first tab, it's indented. It's biological organization. I click on that, and here we are. So you see we're in edit mode. We got a little blinking cursor. For some folks, that can be a lot more uh, distracting them for others so we'll get out of this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right over here on this side 
and go to view. All right, and then it has navigation planes, immersive reader, and then reading view. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of this information because our focus for the next 15 minutes or 20 minutes is going to be all biological organization. So I'll get into navigational planes. I want to hide all of this. Now I've got more real estate. And when you're creating this, there are there's not really margins. And you can slide and move up and down, left and right. So the real estate is not restricted to a Word document. It's not restricted to a PowerPoint slide or a Google slide. It's a lot more vast. And it really makes it easier whenever you're presenting the information. So I'll get out of edit mode. You see this blinking cursor still here, and I'll just go to reading view, and then voila, there we go. And this is where we are. Slide our resources out of the way. But we can go through the biological organization, and it can identify all right, the details, talking about vocabulary. That's another thing you can add into it. Vocabulary's been around for a long time, and it shouldn't go anywhere because it's highly important, because the words that you see, if you don't understand them, there's some possible to learn the material. So vocabulary is always going to be a hot topic. And there's been multiple strategies over the years uh, that we've used and some teachers still enforce them today and then for some teachers it comes and it goes. And for vocabulary, the old vocabulary wall, it's highly effective and it still should be used. That's one thing I do want to add. So evaluating my OneNote platform or what we've generated here and how we can use it, it's, it's got to stay live. So it's got to be changing for the better every semester or every from one unit to the next. So if we move from one standard to the next and we see that we need to apply something so we can reinforce um, the heart of that content, we need to add it. And I always think two minds are better than one. So collaborating and sharing this, uh, this platform with other teachers and administrators is highly effective. All this does is create visuals. We implemented this. These are all Creative Commons pictures. They're shared publicly. There is no copyright stamp on any of these images. And that's one great thing about OneNote. As far as videos, embedding a video. Uh, I have not figured out a way to embed a video. Uh, that's something I want to ensure, but you can easily apply a link, just like I did earlier with the articles and the pirate preps and that can be attached to a video that you can easily use to help reinforce the instruction, whether it be you know, a two or three minute video that students can create a thinking map or any kind of um, concept to show that what they saw besides just creating five facts or 10 facts. So after going through the content of biological organization, we can go right back. We're presenting this information. This is the information that we're learning. Go to learning targets. How do we feel? Students will compare and analyze the level of the biological organization, organisms, species, populations, communities, ecosystems, and biospheres. Start your first learning tar target product now. We get done, we feel good about it, we check it off, we get out of reading view. Simple as that. All in all, the Capstone Project was a challenging experience. Uh, it forced me to think about what I had learned in the past. It forced me to combine what I'm walking into every day on a daily basis and combining what I've learned. And then at the same token, on top of all that, take the standards, uh, the technology standards, and apply those. How, what are the details? And talk, identifying the detail for the purpose of action with OneNote, and how does that apply to the standards that are going to be assessed or evaluated, or essentially not such much an assessment, but the standards are simply directional purposes. Uh, they give you direction. They allow you to make sure, to give you checkpoints to make sure that you can, that you're moving in the right direction and that you're being effective as a teacher from previous research that's already been accounted for. As far as advice moving forward for any other educator that's looking to better their teaching environment, they have to look for, they have to assess their situation that they're currently in, and they have to identify the area that's lacking purpose. And as soon as they do that, uh, then they have to come up with a creative scenario, and in this case, if it's technology-based, uh, how can they improve that purpose and create, uh, give it more purpose of action to where it's more effective and it's more dynamic. 
and the students can um, respond off of it or feed off of it moving forward. At the end of the day, we have one job, and that's to teach. We should not be trying to separate the teaching aspect from our evaluations that come from our administration. It should be one job, and that's to teach with one platform, and that's one note. I'm Brian Crawford. This wraps up my capstone project for the master's program in instructional technology at Kennesaw State. Thank you for such a wonderful experience.